I'm Christine Grady. I'm from the Department of Bioethics here at the NIH Clinical Center, and we're going to spend the next hour talking about ethical principles in clinical research. Um, to start, of course, these are mostly my views and don't rep necessarily represent those of the government, and I have no conflicts of interest that uh, I need to describe. All right, how many of you have studied ethics? You, those of you in the room. So a bunch of you have. So this may be very familiar territory. Um, hopefully you can have some good questions or additions to the commentary. So I wanted to start with just a couple of examples uh, fairly randomly selected from the New England Journal of Medicine. This is a study, uh, double-blind, double placebo-controlled, randomized study of people with traumatic brain injury seen in the emergency room given progesterone to see if it made a difference in their uh, symptoms and recovery. Um, and this was a study that was done without informed consent. It was done in an emergency room. Here's another example of a study uh, looking at children with vesiculo, um, I can't say the word, reflux. Um, and again, it was a double-blind, randomized, controlled study to see if antimicrobials uh, made a difference in terms of reflux. There's another study where um, the participants were pregnant women, and they were randomized to two different time points in terms of thyroid screening, and if they screened positive on the, on the tests that were done, they were given levothyroxine. Um, the outcome, the primary outcome of the study was cognitive ability, or IQ, actually, in their children at the age of three. So all recently done studies, <coughs> excuse me, all published in the, in the New England Journal of Medicine. So I think the interesting question to ask ourselves is, are these studies ethical? And if, the, if you think so, or if you think, if you're not sure, the question is, how do you make that decision? So just for the people in the room, what do you think makes studies of the nature that I just showed you ethical or not ethical? Any ideas? Informed consent? Okay. So we had TBI patients who couldn't give informed consent, children who legally can't give informed consent. Um, so does that mean two of the three were not ethical? Not necessarily, right? Okay, risk versus benefit, and we didn't go into the details of those, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Anything else? Yeah? No actual harm. Okay, so that kind of falls into the rubric of risk versus benefit. Okay, I think it's really uh, interesting to think about what does make uh, research ethical, and so that's what we're going to talk about. I want to point out a couple of things before we go there, though. Um, what I often think of as the inherent moral tension or the ethical tension in research is pretty much captured by this slide. And that is that the goal of research, the goal of clinical research, is to generate knowledge, useful knowledge about human health or illness, ways to prevent, diagnose, or treat diseases. And the goal is not to benefit the individuals who participate in the trial, although sometimes they do benefit. So that sets up this interesting problem ethically, and that is that the people who are asked to participate are, are actually the means to developing a useful information. Um, and therefore, uh, they are at risk of exploitation. And that's really what a lot of the ethics of clinical research is sort of aimed at um, attending to. We know that sometimes people think of clinical research like this, you know, that people who participate in research are human guinea pigs, that they are um, susceptible to exploitation and sometimes are exploited. Um, the lay perception of, of research often is this understanding. Um, but I think it's interesting to think about how we reconcile this. So what I like to say is that the ethics of clinical research really 
it requires recognizing that there are two parts to this puzzle. That generating useful knowledge is an ethical responsibility, and that knowledge can promote benefits to society and to future patients. And that that effort of generating useful knowledge for, for future patients and for society has to be constrained by or balanced by, if you prefer the analogy, um, protecting and respecting the rights and welfare of the people who are participating, the participants. And so there's this constant tension between these two, and that's how we think about the ethics of clinical research.